I don't really need an awful lot of sleep. You know, you don't, how much sleep do you need to go play three hours? Kenny Stabler may have been the coolest quarterback of all time. He read his playbooks by the jukebox light and saved his greatest hits for the biggest moments. Stabler's virtuoso performance in Super Bowl XI helped win the Raiders their first title. While Stabler possessed country-fried charm, kicker Garo Yepremian provided the comic relief on a team that was serious about winning. Is it right if I play football with long hair? I, I don't see there's any setback uh, playing with long hair. I've done it without any hair, and it doesn't bother me. <laughs> a 42-yard attempt by your premium. Snap, step down, the kick is blocked. Rally loose on the field. It is picked up by Garrow. He tries to throw a pass. Deflected in the air, grabbed by Beth. Garrow's gaffe in Super Bowl VII was the one blemish on the Dolphins' perfect season. But the native of Cyprus made a lot of big kicks, too. In 1971, the longest game in NFL history ended on his foot. Hall of Fame tackle Bob St. Clair used his feet for something different. Although I haven't played against Bob St. Clair since 1962, I still dream about him at night. He was the greatest leg whipper of all times. St. Clair was known for eating raw meat, and he played like it. But his Hall of Fame enshrinement speech proved he could also deliver a tender moment. I want to thank you very much, all of you, for making my day in the sun so memorable. Thank you. St. Clair was on cloud nine. That's where Detroit's Charlie Sanders made his career. Most of the time, gravity was Sanders' only tackler for Charlie Sanders is the Lions' own Flying Walinda. We'll miss the Hall of Fame tight end with the leaping catches. And we'll miss his teammate Mel Farr, the 1967 NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. We'll miss Jethro Pugh, whose 14 years in Dallas were spent hitting the mark. We'll sing a final goodbye to Giants coach Ali Sherman and to his most famous player. Here's Frank Gifford, all pro halfback. Hey, Joe, are you still using that greasy kid stuff on your hair? What else? Vitalis, that's what else. As a pitch man and Hall of Fame halfback, Frank Gifford was the face of Sunday afternoons in New York. Later, the nation got to know Gifford as the voice of Monday night. But in Philadelphia, They'll always remember him for his encounter with Hall of Famer Chuck Bednarik, a part-time concrete salesman who hit like a ton of bricks. This is the way you go after him. You're frothing from the mouth. And you say, get him, get him. You just want to kill somebody. Not mean you're going to put him in the ground after, but you just want to kill a guy. Number 60 was one of the last of the Iron Men, playing both defense and offense. In the 1960 NFL Championship game, the 35-year-old was on the field for all but three snaps and made the title-clinching tackle. That's the end of the line. The Philadelphia Eagles have won the World Championship of Professional Football. It's important to remember perfect moments and people at their best. If we do that, those we lose are never really gone. <laughs>